Hello. Uh, we're going to take a look now at another one of the single BJT transistor amplifiers, which is the common base amplifier. In a common base amplifier, the input is fed into the emitter of the BJT transistor and the output is taken out of the collector. Uh, that's what I've tried to represent in this circuit. Uh, there are a couple of um, interesting things about the circuit that maybe we haven't seen before. Uh, number one, we have a base capacitance connected from the base of the transistor directly to ground. Um, and basically what that capacitance is doing is it's providing um, an AC ground connection for the base. So CB provides a short to ground for AC signals. Because remember, the base is the common terminal for a common base amplifier. Um, and then the emitter resistance in this case is not necessarily needed for circuit uh, operation or performance. Um, however, it's included in there to provide a path for the DC bias current. And so RE in this case, it provides because uh, as you can see from the circuit, uh, we're going to have some collector current flowing through the circuit just for, you know, the DC bias current. And then if you didn't have a emitter resistor, then that current will be directly fed into your input signal source, which may not be a good idea. So that's the purpose of RE in this circuit. Um, since we are used to looking at circuits with the input signal being fed from the, you know, or represented at the left of the circuit and the output signal at the right hand, uh, side of the circuit, I have redrawn the circuit um, in a way that's commonly also represented out there. Uh, and you can convince yourself that it is the same circuit, uh, the exact same electrical connections. The only thing it's, it's been turned around uh, for exactly that reason, to, so that the input signal lies at the left hand side of the circuit, the output signal lies on the right hand side of the circuit. Other than that, same connections. Uh, I'm not going to do the DC analysis for the circuit because uh, it's easy to see that for DC purposes, all the capacitors will be open circuits. And what you will end up with is just your standard uh, four resistor biasing network. So we've done that analysis for a common emitter amplifier. We won't repeat it here. Um, but I will do the AC analysis for the circuit. And in order to do that, um, I'm going to first draw the AC equivalent circuit. And remember, for the AC equivalent circuit, we are assuming that the capacitors behave as um, short circuits for signals within the frequency range of the input signal. So I'm just going to substitute all my caps with shorts. AC equivalent circuit. And that leaves me with the following. I have my collector resistor, which is tied to an AC ground, since it's tied to a DC source. My emitter resistor, RE, tied to ground. And then my base is directly tied to ground. And the reason why I'm not representing R1 and R2 is because they will be uh, both resistors tied to a ground, R1 to an AC ground and R2 directly to ground. Uh, and they're in parallel with this capacitor, which is a short to ground. So two resistors in parallel with a short, uh, the equivalent uh, resistance is zero, so it's just a short to ground. Uh, so this is our um, AC equivalent circuit. Uh, this will be our V in, this will be our V out. And I'm going to draw the small signal model so that we can derive expressions for uh, the small signal voltage gain, the input resistance and the output resistance, um, just so that we can look at the um, standard parameters for a common base amplifier. Let's go ahead and do that. So this will be equivalent to yeah, substituting my transistor or replacing my transistor with the hybrid pi model. I will have the following. Um, so I have my input signal V in. And then there is R pi, which is the base to emit the resistance. The base is directly connected to ground. Um, and then I have my emitter. Uh, with an emitter resistance connected to ground. Uh, 
I will represent my transistor by using that um, current source of value beta times IV or equivalently GM times V pi. IV being the current flowing into the base of the transistor, V pi being the voltage drop across the R pi resistor. For simplicity, I'm going to ignore a uh, little around. We're just going to assume that the output resistance of the transistor is equal to infinity. And so the next I'll just represent my RC connected to ground. All right, um, so let's go ahead and derive expressions for uh, voltage gain, input resistance, output resistance. My voltage gain is going to be the ratio of uh, the output voltage to the input voltage. So first I'm going to come up with expressions of um, output voltage V out and input voltage, and then I'll just take the ratio between the two. Now we can see in this circuit, um, and again, I haven't done this, but I'm, I'm going to uh, represent where the transistor lies just for clarity. But this is basically the small signal model for my BJT transistor. So this will be my base, my collector, my emitter. All right, uh, my output resistance, you can see there's gonna be a current flowing through resistor RC of value GM times V pi. Uh, and so the voltage drop at the output, which is taken out of the collector, or right there, uh, is gonna be equal to uh, zero volts because there's a ground here minus the voltage drop across RC, which is GM times V pi, the value of that current, times the resistance RC. So V out will be equal to zero minus GM V pi RC. And then uh, just by looking at the circuit, uh, we can see that the base is tied to uh, directly tied to ground and so the input voltage is just going to be negative v pi and now i can go ahead and uh, take the ratio of those two values for my voltage gain v out over v in and so that will be uh, negative gm v pi rc divided by v pi I can eliminate my V pi's and, uh, oh, I missed a negative sign here. Uh, the negative signs are also going to go away because a negative quantity over negative quantity gives me a positive quantity. So this will be GM times RC. Now, if we recall, GM is just uh, the transconductance of the amplifier and it's equal to uh, the inverse of little re or one over little re. And so I can rewrite this expression as RC divided by little re, um, which should remind us of the expression for a common emitter, the gain of a common emitter amplifier, um, collector resistance over emitter resistance, except in this case, it's now a positive quantity, meaning there is no inversion from input to output. This is a non-inverting type of voltage amplifier. Um, the gain can also be expressed as the transconductance GM times the collector resistance. Uh, let's take a look at now the input resistance and output resistance for the circuit. And the input resistance is going to be the resistance looking uh, into the input terminal, which in this case is the emitter terminal. So it will be the resistance looking right there. That's our in. And likewise, our out is going to be the resistance looking into the output terminal, our out. And my R in is going to be equal to the parallel combination of capital R E and little r e, which we can approximate as little r e. It's typically going to be much smaller than capital R e. My output resistance is going to be simply R C or if I want to take into consideration the output resistance of the transistor, RC in parallel with little ro. Typically, um, RC will swamp little ro as well. And so this will be my um, results for voltage gain in resistance and output resistance for the common base amplifier. Things to note. 
uh, as I mentioned, it's a, a non-inverting voltage amplifier. Um, if we are to compare it with the common emitter circuit as a voltage amplifier, we can say it has, can have comparable gain. Um, much smaller input resistance, since in this case it's little array, as well as uh, comparable output resistance. Now, we're going to see that in some applications, we are interested in having a small input resistance. Uh, for example, uh, for a current amplifier, um, typically we will want a small input resistance, a large output resistance. For a, And so this type of circuit is often also used as a current buffer. And the reason for that is you can see since the input is taken at the emitter, the output is taken out of the collector, um, the input current and output current are going to be approximately equal to each other. So the ratio of input to output current is going to be approximately equal to one. Um, and then it has desirable characteristics for a current buffer, which is small input resistance, uh, fairly large output resistance. Another application for common base amplifiers is sometimes uh, we need to have matched impedances in circuits, and so um, having the input resistance being small, um, equal to RE in this case, that may be an advantage for some applications. Thank you.